Hello and welcome, this is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to create a card using this new flower shower stamp from House Mouse Designs and Spellbinders. I love all the detail that House Mouse Designs puts in their stamps and I also love that they always come with a few sentiments. For this one, I'm going to do I'm going to watercolor the image, but you can color house mouse stamps any way you want. I have several different house mouse cards that I've created in the fall that use different coloring techniques to color them. So um, I will link to one at the end of this video. The first step for this card, and I'm using some Spellbinders watercolor paper. You can use whatever watercolor paper you want. You just want to make sure that you do use watercolor paper when you're watercoloring because it needs to be able to handle the moisture. I'm going to stamp and emboss the image with black embossing powder. You could regularly stamp it with some permanent ink and then do some watercolor. The one thing that you want to keep in mind though if you do it that way is that you need to make sure when you're watercoloring you're not doing two different colors right beside each other that are wet otherwise they're going to bleed into each other. By embossing the image uh, it creates a little bit of a ridge so that watercolor stays where you put it. You don't have to worry as much about making sure one area is dry before working right next to it because you have that ridge of the embossing. I also really like the different texture that embossing gives to watercolor. So it is a way that I do like to do it. I did black embossing powder here. You could do a brown embossing powder that would look really cute with the mice. I kept it black just because of the flowers. I thought brown might look a little bit odd with them, but you can get creative with this. You could even do a metallic embossing powder if you want. Once I have that embossed and make sure that entire image is embossed, I can put my embossing tool away and then we can start watercoloring. Now I'm gonna watercolor the background first and I'm gonna use Distress Ink Refills. This is one of my favorite ways to use Distress Ink Refills simply because it gives them another purpose other than re-inking ink pads. They're nice and pigmented, so I can get some really dark tones of colors as well as light tones by adding simply adding some water. And because they are dye reinkers, they're transparent, so I'm not going to add um, any opacity to it. I'm using that for the background, and then I'm going to use some Distress watercolor crayons for watercoloring the actual images. You could do watercolor or Distress refills for watercoloring the images. I like the watercolor pencils for this particular one for doing the images because they have a little bit of pigment in them so they have a little bit of opacity or chalkiness to them and it's just going to give a little bit of a different texture, a little bit of a different look from the transparent background. So the colors I'm using for the background here are Bundled Sage, tumbled glass and broken china and I'm using a wide watercolor brush. This one's a great one for backgrounds just because you can get a large area quickly. I am trying to keep away from the little mouse hands, ears, noses. I don't want them to have a blue tone when I go to watercolor them lately so I'm trying to pay attention and keep away from them as much as possible. I am making the sky a little bit streaky because I wanted to, there to be a little bit um, of texture back there. I wanted to see a couple of different colors, which is why I'm using the two different colors. And I wanted to make sure that you could see each one of those colors as well. Once I have the background as I like it, I'm going to let that completely dry. Now I am going to create a shaped card with this house mouse flower shower stamp. So I, um, don't necessarily need to color this entire image because I know I'm going to be cutting out the outer images or the outer edges out, but I still do like to color all the way to the edge, making sure that I have that completely filled in so that when I go to die cut, I don't have to worry as much about where my die lands. I can just pay attention to where that die is with the picture and um, make sure that the full image that I'm die cutting is completely colored. So the first color that I'm using, I'm using Distress Watercolor Pencil Set 6, and the first color that I'm using is Dusty Concord, and I'm using that to color in this lavender. I absolutely love these little flowers flowing down, and I want them to be a little... I don't necessarily... I'm not necessarily keeping the watercolor within that embossed line for these. I'm... Am being a little bit messy with this watercolor. You can't really tell on screen, 
but I am letting some of that purple go outside of the embossing so that I can see that it's purple. Sometimes when you do embossing, you don't really see a lot of the color inside because there's not a large area for it. So I wanted to make sure that you could see that those flowers were purple. So I did get a little bit messy and not, not too messy, but just a little bit and make sure that you could see that they were purple. For the greenery, I'm just using bundled sage. It's one of my favorite greens to work with and it just so happens that it's in this particular set. When it comes to the mice, I'm using the sponge sugar for the inside of the ears, the tips of the nose, and then the hands, feet, and the tail. It's a nice soft pink. And then for the larger mouse, I'm using scorched timber. That's not from this set, that's a separate one, but it's a nice dark brown, almost black. And then I'm going to use a different brown for the little mouse. So when I watercolor with these pencils, I use my brush right on the tip of the watercolor pencil, pulling off the paint. And then when I go to paint them, I start on the outer side or outer edges of whatever it is that I'm watercoloring. And then I will blend that color in a little bit. I want the outside to be uh, shaded. I want it to be a little bit darker. And by blending that in, then the inside naturally gets a little bit of a lighter tone and I get some natural shading there. Now, while it's still wet, if it's a little bit too dark, I can just add a little bit of water and blend it out a little bit, get it a little bit lighter. I like to do these while they're still wet between the brown and the pink so that I get a little bit of blending between the pink of the nose and then the brown of the head. For the small mouse, I'm using brushed corduroy, but I found right away that it is actually kind of a little bit too green for my liking. I wasn't expect I was expecting to have a little bit of a green tone, but it ended up looking a lot more green than I was expecting. So after that first coat, I went and added a little bit of that scorched timber just to give it a little bit more of a brown tone and so that I didn't have a green mouse. I'm doing the same technique as the first one. I'm starting around the edges and then blending my way in. And you can see that I go to the paper towel quite often. That's just to get any excess color or excess moisture off my brush. And it just gives me a little bit more control when I'm watercoloring. I love this watercolor brush that I'm using. It has water in the handle. So when I change between colors, I just need to squeeze it on that paper towel. And then I have a clean brush ready to go for the next time. So here is my image so far. One thing that I love to do with these house mouse stamps is I like to put a little bit, a little dot of glossy accents on their eyes when they're open. The small mouse, the eyes are closed, so I'm not going to put it there. It just makes them look like they have beady eyes a little bit more. And I like the look of it. I think it just adds a different texture and um, something interesting to look at. So I'm using the Mirrored Arch Labels dies to cut out the shapes for this. I have the largest die that I'm using for the card base. And then I skip one. And the next one down is going to be for the house mouse image. And that's the one that I'm taping down right now. And then the two down from that are going to be used to create a frame with the purple. So I'm going to have a watercolored image that is slightly bigger and have a frame around the outside edge of it, just giving it a little bit of a different look. It's just a way to kind of focus your eye on the image, give it a little bit of look and it's just a different way to do it rather than having a mat behind it. So for my card base, I want to make sure that this side blade here doesn't go on the card. So I'm putting it just outside of my card fold. That way I still have a card that folds properly, but I still get a card base that is shaped. I like to tape all my dies in place when I'm doing things like this because I can make sure that the die does not shift and I can make sure that it cuts all the way through. For my card base, because I'm doing two fairly thick layers of cardstock, I started with the blade side down, then I checked to see the cut and I can see that on one end it hasn't all the way cut through. So I flipped my plates and cut it again, this time with the blade side up so that the pressure of the machine can really concentrate on that area that hasn't cut. This is just a great way to add some interest to your cards, giving it a little bit of a different look because you have a shaped card rather than having just a complete rectangle card. And if you're interested in die cut or partial die cutting or shaped cards, I've used this die set uh, a few weeks ago in a card um, and used it to create some different shaped cards. And it's a great one for that because it has two flat sides. 
you can get a lot of different variety with card shapes and get creative with it. And again, it's a fun way just to change things up with your cards. So there is that frame. You can see how it's going to look on the image. I'm letting my mouse image dry a little bit longer. I have that glossy accents on there and I think it's completely dry, but I wanted to make sure it was totally dry before die cutting. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm taking one of the sentiments from the set and I'm stamping it onto a piece of scrap white cardstock. And I stamped it with Dusty Concord Distress Ink. This is the same color as the Dusty Concord that I used with the watercolor pencils for die cutting the, or sorry, for die cutting, for watercoloring the lavender. Now I noticed that the Propagation Garden sentiment set has a die that works perfectly with a couple of the sentiments for this set. It's the right size for cutting it out and I just thought it would look nice die cut and added to the front of the card like that. So I have that die cut set aside and then I'm going to die cut my image piece so that I have all of my pieces ready to start assembling my card. You can see how because I skipped a size with that nesting die, I get a nice wide um, mat of between the watercolored piece and my card base. If you don't want it to be that wide, you could just use the next size up. Like I said before, I skipped a die size so that I would have a nice frame around that, but you can easily make your watercolored image a little bit better and not have as much of that white there. Now I'm going to glue in that frame. I'm using my favorite Barely Art glue with a fine tip bottle. And between gluing things down, I'm putting an acrylic block on there just to hold everything flat and make sure that it has good contact while it keeps my hands free for putting glue or arranging something else. So I chose where I wanted that sentiment to go, put some glue on the back of that and put that down there. Now the one thing that I often like to do with images like this is add a little bit of stickle somewhere for a little bit of texture. I didn't want to do that with this one. I didn't think it would look right on the flowers and I liked it the way it is so I left it as is. It's a very very simple card, simple design, but because you have that shaped card base it gives it a little bit more interest and by putting the frame on top of the watercolor image you still see the watercolor surrounding it but again it gives it a little bit of a different look and it's an alternative to putting a mat behind your watercolored image thank you so much for joining me today i really appreciate your time and you being here i hope you have a fantastic day